Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Influential You podcast. I'm Josh D'Amigo, program faculty member for Influential You and your co-host for this weekly podcast. Our co-founder and CEO here at Influential You, John Patterson, is in studio as well, and you'll hear from him in a bit. At Influential You, we teach you how to take charge of your career and amplify your professional influence. Since 2009, we have helped thousands of business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs become more influential, more rewarded, and more you. Today, we welcome Catherine Newton to the Influential You podcast. Catherine Newton is the CEO of Catherine Newton Consulting. She is a fiercely motivated, dynamic executive coach, trainer, speaker, and mentor who loves to help purpose-driven individuals master their businesses and their lives. So that way they're able to serve more people with their inspired vision and their mission. Her mentoring is rooted in upgrading a leader's internal operating system and ensuring they have the tactics and strategy to succeed. It's grounded in decades of education and training, and she has 20 years of coaching and advising leaders, 25 years of personal experience in business ownership and immersion for over a decade in the study and practice of entrepreneurship and soul design. Her coaching and advice is both practical and heart-centered, as you'll see in a moment. She shared the stage with Oprah and has recently completed the Fundamentals of Transaction program and the Mechanics and Practice program here at Influential U. Today, she'll tell us more about how Influential U helped her up-level to organize her ideas and use transactional competence to think accurately about the tactics she uses in her business and in her life. She has two high-achieving, ambitious, grown-up children, and when she's not speaking at events or adventuring around the world, she's based in Auckland, New Zealand, with her partner and adorable griffin, Gracie. And thank you for joining me and welcoming Catherine Newton to the Influential You podcast. Catherine, welcome, and thank you so much for telling me what a griffin was earlier. I guess it's an Ewok dog. Is that what you were saying? George Lucas loved the, the the Griffins, and so he actually modeled the Ewoks on Star Wars after them. And I am the proud owner of a of a, a ten month old Griffin. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring John Patterson in because whenever you hear about dogs, you think John Patterson wants to pet the dog. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the, here's the three of us. Thank you so much. Tell me in your own words a little bit more about your business and offer the marketplace. What do you do at Catherine Newton Consulting in your own words? Well, as uh, you so aptly described at the beginning, my absolute passion is to help uh, leaders to really find out uh, what is the internal uh, struggle that has to meet with the external reality to be able to create masterful strategies in their business and their life. I'm a really big believer that these go together. You can't separate uh, having a great business without actually having the conditions of your life in order uh, and you know what I know to be true is, is that it's a significant journey that we have to go on right uh, and and here at Catherine Newton Consulting my, my passion uh, is leading people into their greatness helping to empower them so that they can go out there and change the world with their genius and their energy and their new love of their life that's inspiring already and you've got a website we'll, we'll flash the website up on the screen so that way people can see just where, where you can find more about Catherine and, and Catherine we are really excited to have you I'm excited just because of the energy that she put in her emails I could tell immediately this is a performer and I have a new best friend in New Zealand <laughs> which I'm not supposed to say but it's true this time Catherine hey. tell us a little bit about life before you were studying with us at Influential You Oh, wow. Goodness me. So I uh, have always been someone who regarded happiness as a uh, as a benchmark. 
And uh, before I joined Influential You, I thought I was happy. I thought I was living the good life. I thought I had things in order. But what I realized is that there were certain aspects of my life that were being what we might call unattended. Uh, and there, there were consequences that were happening in my life that meant that uh, these, these certain areas were showing up as, as difficult or, or challenging. Uh, and I found myself uh, literally going through what I might call a, um, you know, a, a break, a breakdown, not, not a mental breakdown, but a breakdown of the way that I did business and the way that I showed up in my life. I wasn't happy with my weight. I wasn't happy with where my career was going. I wasn't happy with how I was running my business. Uh, and when someone, when, uh, when I was shoulder tapped to go and join the team at AUT, Auckland University of Technology, to lecture in innovation and entrepreneurship, I um, thought, oh, that sounds, that sounds easy. Um, I'll go and do that. And what I did was I, I actually neglected my personal brand. Uh, and, and then I was not happy. You know, the yeah, very thing yeah. that I was striving for. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it in my heart and soul. And I, this is really lovely. So I, I appreciate that you used the word benchmark and talking about sort of the level set, the way you level set your own happiness or satisfaction. And that mm. you said, I thought I was happy. And there must have been an experience of some kind. Or was it more like, and I'll say this, I know many mm. people who cop an, an attitude of, you know, it's all good. You know, it's all great. Uh, life is, mm. life is extraordinary. With they're really doing is that they're willing, you know, they're, they're attempting to, to declare their happiness, declare their satisfaction, something like that. Was it more like that or was it something else? So uh, anyone that knows me will, will uh, probably have described me back then as being a bit of a Pollyanna. So I saw yeah. the good, I still do see the good in everything, but it's more grounded now. Uh, but I saw the good in everything. And even when there was, when there was challenges, like for example, uh, at the time, five years ago, my business was on a trajectory. I was earning great money. Uh, I had an amazing team of coaches that I trained. Uh, I had money flowing in. My kids were proud of me. You know, I had my home. It was just all, it, I felt like I had everything that I wanted. Uh, but what I know to be true is that the way that you run a, um, uh, you know, an early six-figure business is very different to the way that you run a high six-figure business. And what started to happen was I, I, I didn't have the right resources around me. I didn't have the right people. I didn't have the right influence. I didn't have the right um, mentorship. I didn't have the right systems. I didn't have the right strategies. And it just became too big and too uh, overwhelming. And, uh, and, and, and so that's where, you know, that's where the breakdown happened. It was quite, yeah. quite phenomenal, really. Yeah. And I, I yeah. love your use of, of the word breakdown. And I'll, I'll use our language with, with mm. breakdown being a collapse of function. That's a lot of yeah. people will come to us and they'll, they'll say something to the extent of like, well, I was doing really well. And I'm like, exactly. That's, those are the people we want. We were looking for, and we don't want to seem elitist, but this program isn't because you're breaking down and you're having these terrible. No, we're, we're not a support group. We are for mm -hmm. ambitious yeah. adults, people who are moving in a way that mm -hmm. they've seen some success. Yes. At the same time, you told me that then you met Drew Knowles and there was that there was something, there was that inductive kick. What was that thing where you were like, up with this, I will no longer put, I need mm -hmm. to place myself in the fundamentals of transaction. I, I believe that part of it was understanding far deeper about around my personality type mm. and i it was oh that's better <laughs> it was almost <laughs> that's like that was the light bulb that went off <laughs> uh so literally it was it was very much like that and the fact that this oh <laughs> that's all we needed um but what happened was that i became aware of my personality in a deeper level and, and i became aware that my my penchant for freedom uh, lacked structure. Uh, mm -hmm. My desire to have experiences was um, disabling me 
uh, from from really reaching my fullest potential and and reaching those lofty goals or those aims that I was striving for. And uh, I could see that, you know, I was getting in my own way of that yeah. next level of growth. And, and I think part of it too was the, some of the languaging that you used. I do consider myself to be an ambitious um, adult. What I didn't realize when in dialogue with Drew and attending the online and the, and the in-person workshops to discover is whether I should step into this was just how much my my lack of uh, being aware around um, the actual strategy and well, it was more about the um, you know the the assessment, the evaluation, the measuring side of my business that I completely was you know being a performer. It's like nah. <laughs> oh look at that later you know that's just a distraction i'm just going to get on with being a people person and speaking uh -huh. and training and coaching and doing what i love yeah. but uh it was it was that it really clenched and, and and i think by understanding more about what being an ambitious adult that really captured my attention as well mm, that's so good mm. uh, did you experience during the program that you started to to uh discover different ways you might be naive uh, around oh. number around strategies around your personality around the satisfaction of different conditions of life what what happened there yeah oh, gosh it's it's you know this is almost a vulnerable um admission for me john and yeah. you know th thank you for asking and creating the space for for this discussion because it's exactly the same thing that I see in my clients. And it's almost mm. as if I've had to go through these, <laughs> this, this challenging situation in order for me to be able to then um, stand on my, uh, you know, stand up in my business and really know exactly the steps to take um, to move forward. But I think it was, um, you know, what, what I wanted and what I had, there was a gap. And um, in, in that gap, I realized that actually I was, in, in terms of the terminology that we use here at Influential You uh, with the training, is that I was in a state of despair in some of the areas. Now, John, you speak about the, the four levels that we go through from despair to ambitious adult. Right. And I didn't realize just how much I was in despair around certain areas, like building a team like having the right systems, like right. Um, the scaling ability to free up my time, uh, like my the fact that I hadn't done an inventory of my resources, the fact that mm. I had years of content that I hadn't put into one place. There were so many things which were then affecting my ability to make the money that I desired. Uh, um, and, and that was affecting my health. Mm. And then my health issues kind of came to the fore and I realized that actually I was out of alignment with my health as well. So it was like right. all of these things that were happening. I think what I want to do too is, is just take a moment and for our listeners say a little bit about what Catherine's referring to. In the beginning of the Fundamentals of Transaction program, we launch into a conversation about what we call states of mind, that people are oftentimes demonstrating a state of mind. And we produce a kind of benchmark. I love that you use that word. I'll use that word now. A kind of mm. benchmark we're going to call ambitious adult. Mm. And ambitious adult is a certain kind of state of mind. And you see it in those people who are making offers, making requests, uh, seeing that they, if they don't have a pathway, that they construct one or get the help they need to produce a pathway. And so that's the benchmark we have. And so if we take, you know, the state of mind of ambitious adult, there are other states of mind like naivete, mm -hmm. right? Or adult. Adult is what most people might be, kind of responsible for things, but they're not doing the same work that an ambitious adult might mm -hmm. do to build transactions to satisfy their aims. And then there's despair. And what I'll say about despair, and it's an important thing, is despair is often the state when people don't have a pathway for things. Mm. You know, I don't have a pathway for this. I don't have a pathway for that. I don't have a pathway to alter my weight. I don't have a pathway to, 
make my income. I don't have a pathway. And mm -hmm. I may even cop a good attitude. I may even hope, finger cross, you know, yes. manifest. I mean, you know, just fill in the blank, but I may do all mm -hmm. kinds of things in an attempt mm. to not construct a pathway because mm. I'm just in despair. And by the way, I know a great number of people that are listening have spent the last couple of years in despair. Mm. A, a great mm -hmm. number. And so it's, mm. it's a fine state. It's not a problem at all. But the moment this is this is mm. yeah, what were you going to say? There's a key point that it's not, it's, it's not a problem until no. uh, you see that and until you don't do anything about it and 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 i think that that's a um a very good um thing to discuss here because uh i didn't know back then that i was um uh, lacking some of the important um resources to be able to grow my my state of mind my pathway my my way forward and and I was doing, you know, great work out there and, and my clients were having great success. Uh, but what I find so awesome is now that there's this ability to think accurately, which is, you know, which is, you know, what I've really stepped into as a result of the work that, that, that I've done through Influential You. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it comes back to kind of what you had put in the pre-show notes. You know, I mm -hmm. was just throwing shit and seeing what stuck. Right. I was just seeing <laughs> Which so did. many entrepreneurs do. It's like, you know, especially my yeah. personal analysis type, because I want freedom. Don't don't box me in. Don't tell me I have to do yeah. something. Don't make me stick to a plan. I just I just feel like going over here. I feel like going over here because I want I lead from my heart, right? Yeah. And you know, you mentioned the secret before, you know, um when we were discussing it. And and I started there. That was the moment I read the secret and I was like, oh my God, ask, believe, receive. Oh, Fantastic. All my prayers are answered. And, and I became a law of attraction practitioner. Mm, I became wow. a heart centered life coach. I, I used all my experience of being in business to, to show people how to be, you know, the best version of themselves. But what was missing uh, through all of this was, was actually the realization that freedom actually equals structure and discipline and commitment and consistency and persistence and uh and that's how we reach our aims in life yeah and i love that too there's a there's this quote that i've been saying a lot lately jack dorsey twitter he said um basically a playground without rules is chaos and i feel oh, like that's such a great example of a performer's you know status this is how we move but right. when you, you get so much more freedom when you have that structure. And from yeah. the notes, it sounds like you found a structure. Tell me a little bit more about kind of the structure that you're using now and mm. how you're using it to propel your own offer in the marketplace. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I part of the structure that, uh, that I know and love so well uh, through this process uh, is the power of the mastermind. So I have a really, really great peer group and we, uh, we take our offers through what we call the, 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 um, the 13 step process that you've taught me. Uh, we take it through the transaction cycle, which is part of what the, the, um, you know, the, the, the narrative that we use here at Influential You and, and, and help me to really step into that place of, of really creating winning formulas uh, and and having that, I mean, I've I've always had, dare I say, a, a winner's mindset. Uh, I have a very very strong belief that, and 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 I, I believe I can. Um, but what I came to see and realize is that uh, the the that that is a really significant piece of making mm. things work is having the mm. right people around you. Uh, the right relationships around you to uh, to really help to escalate, especially being a performer. Uh, that was really gold for me. Yeah. And, and I'll, John, I'll give you a second just to say a little bit about, because we don't talk about mastermind too much on the podcast. This may be the first time we brought it up. Do you want to say anything about what that program is designed Sure. For? Um, well, it, many people are familiar with the concept of a mastermind. So a mastermind group is typically some number of people that get together and utilize one another as a resource. 
So it may be a uh, a resource of, of discussion. Hey, I have a new idea. I want to run it around the group, see what people mm -hmm. think. It may be that there's a resource of actual help. I need somebody who can help me with X. Or does anybody know anybody that can Y? Mm -hmm. I'm looking for um, some venture capital. Who knows? Pe so it's a, sort of a trusted group of people mm -hmm. that meet on a regular basis to utilize one another as a resource. And here at Influential U, we've structured mastermind groups with one of our faculty available to support the group, facilitate the discussion, and also offer some of our own coaching um, from our framework, uh, as you talked about just a moment ago, the 13 steps, mm. the transaction cycle, and so forth. So mm. Mm. I'm kind of curious about something too, because um, listen, I consider Influential U a rather heart-centered um, organization. Um, I'll say it this way. I, as the CEO of this company and the guy that founded this thing with Kirkland Sibbles, we both have a commitment that people are satisfied, mm. satisfied, truly satisfied. And what I mean by that mm. is not the kind of satisfaction I used to think, you know, I, I, it resonates with me a little bit. I used to sort of think satisfaction was more of a, you know, I'm sitting on top of the mountaintop declaring my right. I'm, I can be satisfied in any situation. I can, mm. uh, I can be happy with anything. And, th and the mm. truth is, and mm. I'm sure it's the same for you, Catherine, I can't. However, yeah. however, that old saying that goes, I've been rich and I've been broke and rich is better. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. or, so look, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm committed that people around the world have some pathway to mm. satisfy some of the most important conditions of life mm. as a matter of reality, mm. distinct from a matter of declaration or a kind of mm. a Zen approach to satisfaction. That means mm. the money that you want, the health mm. you desire, the career you desire and so forth and so on. So it sounds like you've made that journey, but is mm. there anything that you want to say about what you've learned about um, your own heart centered journey as a business practitioner because mm. i know a lot of people that step into different businesses and they are of the heart they care deeply mm. about people mm. and and want to help them but they oftentimes lack perhaps some of the business uh education or maybe they find out that they're missing some components so they mm -hmm. they ditch mm. it all together sadly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. you haven't you know, and good <laughs> on you. So what would you say to them about, you know, starting that business that's more of a heart centered business? Oh, th thank you for asking that. And, and I think it's especially important now with uh, the, the um, where we're at, you know, with the state of the economy. Right. There's a lot of uncertainty around uh, around that. And it's, it's especially often the, the heart centered that. Uh, that could see this as an opportunity for, um, oh, well, I'll just, I'll stop what I'm doing because it's not the right time or it doesn't feel safe or, um, you know, I, I the money's not coming in. And I, I just want to make a point here that um, more millionaires are actually created in this, in, 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 the, in, the, in the economy of, the, of a downturn than in any other time. So so I guess what I want to say to the heart-centered um, entrepreneurs and, and leaders out there is that this is this is your time and all you have to do is step forward with that courage and that certainty. But you have to know the steps, right? And and uh, first of all, you have to understand where you are with your money. And uh, it's something I see time and time again with my clients and uh, with those that I'm here to serve is that their money story or their money habits uh, um, can be something that really holds them back. They need to understand, yeah. um, you know, to educate, educate yourself. Um, please educate yourself around around your money and where you are at. Don't bury your head in the sand anymore. Stop being in denial. Stop being in despair. Uh, it's okay to admit that that that's an area um, that is, is is a challenge. The second one is um, to to yeah to have clarity around your why. Why are you doing this? Um, why you know why 
why this particular um, business journey are you on? And and that's what I asked myself, John. I you know I really stepped into that. You know what what don't I know? What do I need to learn? When I started having those conversations with Drew, I really went deep into well, what inspires me. Uh, and and here's he, again to co to quote an Oprah saying, here's what I know to be true. Uh, and, and this is the very heart-centered um, side of it, is if you don't truly love yourself and you haven't really connected in with your internal guidance system, then you're going to allow others to dictate your success or your pathway. Uh, and so this whole journey has taken me deep into myself around that aspect of who am I? And then that's allowed me to really define and enable my personal brand and then seeing how important it is for others to build their personal brand, to find out what they love to do and to, to get excited about it uh, and so that they can truly live into their values and stop denying themselves from, you know, doing what they're here for. Yeah. And you can yeah. see I get really passionate about that. Yeah, that so some, some sort of masochism when you say, you know, uh, well, money isn't everything. Well, it's not nothing. And so it cracks me up when, I, when people try to come yeah. to me justified in that, oh, well, money doesn't everything. And I go, well, okay, but it, it's important. And mm -hmm. it changes the dynamic because they're just saying that thing. And I think that mm -hmm. comes back to really what you were saying when we were talking before this, mm -hmm. and not to poke at the secret or any of those things, no. but having a, a pragmatic step-by-step -step mm -hmm. process in which here's what I need to do, here's my aim, mm -hmm. and how do I get that to mm -hmm. go? Seems yeah. like a better option. And you mentioned a phrase that I'm going to let you say and tell your oh, yeah. story about that. <laughs> What's life like now after you kind of realized, hey, there can be a process that I can use? Tell right. me a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm 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 going to be straight up here and say I still believe in the power of manifesting and visualizations. Sure. I, I'm a big proctor trained coach. Still love that. But actually, um, to use the word that, that you used at conference was fuck luck. We can't just rely on luck, right? <laughs> oh, well, it's so good. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to say this one thing, and then I want to hear more from you because, you know, fuck luck and uh, you can call it influential use relationship with things like the secret and so forth. They're yeah. great. They're fine. Right. However, yeah. however, mm. however, not good strategy when... Mm you're attempting to satisfy certain conditions of life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit like, you know, attempting to manifest myself as a lottery winner um, year after year after year after year, hoping for something to be different as opposed to, well, let's, why don't we just build a strategy for <laughs> making that happen, making that yeah, a reality. Yeah. And it moves you out of there yeah. and immediately into the state of mind of an ambitious adult. So that's yeah. our relationship. Yeah, and, and yeah, we'll let you finish, but you could start by buying a lottery ticket, John. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the doing side of it. Yeah. Go ahead, Kate. Um, so what we know to be true, of course, is that Olympian athletes, they use the visualization process. And I, I genuinely uh, believe and know and have seen myself that – uh the when you apply all of those uh the strategies of you know the law of attraction right because it is a law a universal law but you must uh put in strategies and routines and rituals because you know these olympian athletes when they sat down and they visualize themselves winning uh they sat down and visualized themselves winning <laughs> right <laughs> They, they 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 made time. They prioritized the process. They followed the steps. They got a coach. They they surrounded themselves with a peer group. They um, allowed themselves to be in their genius. So they felt good. It's all of these pieces, you know, that that you know, an Olympian athlete is harnessing their specialized knowledge. That's what they know to do. And they go and do it and they practice and they practice and they practice and they take action and they get feedback and they follow a, follow a, a diet and a regime. Well, the same thing could be said for, for ourselves and our businesses and in our lives. If we don't follow the, you know, the way, you know, the pathway, as we've mentioned, then uh, it's a little bit like going on a diet, right? So one of my uh, aims 
at the midyear conference we had was uh, you got us to to write down our um, a one year, three year, and ten year aim around certain areas. And and at that stage, my um, my key aim was my health. Uh, and uh, I then used my uh, my discipline to really get very clear around that. Uh, and then I, uh, I, I I followed the, the steps. I got a coach. I got a diet plan. I got an exercise plan. I got the supplements. And then I did it. And then when I reached my ideal weight, which I now am, uh, by following this process, I'm going to keep doing what works. And I think that's the problem that happens is that, you know, people find their genius and they 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 find a way to, you know, to um, launch their business and they find a way to make money. But then but then what happens is that they take their foot off the pedal and right. yeah. that's not how you get the winning mindset. That's not how you become an Olympian athlete in your business or in your life. Yeah, it's really fun because, um, mm -hmm. you know, anybody that studies uh atomic habits for example right um you know some of what makes someone extraordinary is really 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 boring repetitive behavior again and 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 it's those who can find their genius mm -hmm. in that boring behavior those who can mm -hmm grow moment to moment by saying, all right, today I don't want to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. That call was terrible. I'm going to pick mm -hmm. up the phone, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that again and again. And then what they develop in themselves is so extraordinary, a kind of, to use your words, a kind of resilience, a kind of mm -hmm. uh, unfuckableness. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. yeah, literally you become unstoppable when you yeah. when you when you realize that 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 is the path. And yeah. you know, the um Aristotle um talks about that the good life for people is a life of happiness. And it's about realizing what is your level of happiness. You used the word extraordinary before, John. So what I love to do is to is is to help people to gallop with an open heart into their extraordinary life. And how do I how do I know how to do that? It's because I've had to get on the horse <laughs> and fall off the horse and learn to canter and learn to jump and learn to gallop and like, oh right, these are the these are the ambitious steps that need to be taken to apply the accurate thinking, to uh, apply the deliberate practice, to apply the things that are not fun. And especially as a performer, there's stuff that's not fun. But now I find fun in it. And it's just that's a whole right. new way of being. Yeah. That's so right. Good. And if you're just joining us, we're joined with Catherine Newton. We're going to flash her website across the screen again so you can see uh -huh. that. And Catherine, quick, just out of curiosity <laughs> and just a quick answer. Do you remember your metrics from the fundamentals of transaction? Do you remember what you scored? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my hand without looking. <laughs> okay, no problem. I, I I'm always well. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm always kind of curious. I have my memorized, and so I always wonder if. Oh, you do, you do, you do. But... I mean, I, you know, it's around the seventy percent mark. So, so you know, and I was going through a massive growth period, um, and that's really um, measuring my. Uh, you know, we had to measure it on a daily basis and then submit, and and that's part of what I know really works is having your eye on the prize. Uh, but when you talk about my my final mark, it was around the seventy percent mark, and that you know, for me, that's a hell of a lot. You know, um, further along than I would have been at the very beginning. I was probably, you know, my consistency was like I was I was throwing shit at the wall. I was like, yeah, luck, luck will luck will have me move that along, and and you know, and and you know, I I am a big believer in the support of the divine, and there is a higher presence, and all of that. And I'm not discrediting that on any level. In fact, you'll find me bring that into a lot of my teachings. Mm -hmm. But it's the measuring and it's the assessing and the evaluating that you've really helped me to learn to enjoy. I can't say I love it, but <laughs> <learn to enjoy. laughs> yeah. And just to be really clear, that's seventy percent on the income, right? So it's seventy percent more than you anticipated making. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Be. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, well, then we like to give someone a soapbox moment, but you well, have something I, to I say. Do have a, I do have another question. So, um, yeah. you know, you started off today talking a little bit about life before Influential You. Tell me yeah. about life now, real quickly. What is mm. life like now as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, uh, in your role? What's happening? I cannot... Uh, be happier where I am right now. I feel like I feel like the, the the pieces of the puzzle have all come together. I have walked away in my time of being with Influential You. I have listened to here and here, <laughs> and I have walked away from working for other people. Uh, and I've heard the call, and I'm back into I've relaunched my brand. I now help people get focused. I help them to align themselves with their vision. I help them to work on their, their brands so that they can get out there and do their genius. And I wasn't doing that before Influential You. I was doing it through someone else. And so that was a really, really big part. Mm -hmm. I am surrounded by like-minded, ambitious, conscious, uh, you know, high level thinking um, entrepreneurs and business leaders who support me and push me and tell me off and, uh, you know, and celebrate with me too. Uh, I have systems in my business uh, and I have a burning desire to do this work, to make a difference. And yeah, the fame and the fortune's not important, but I feel like it's a byproduct of what's coming. Um, what's here for me by um, yeah by being my best self? I think too is that that my I have prioritized my health, and I feel like your health and your wealth go together, yeah. and uh, and 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 that's why you have us measure it right. You have us measure yeah. our health, and and that was um, my my health is now the best it's ever been. I'm in the best shape I think I've been since my since my thirties. Uh, and I feel the the power of it rising. Fantastic. I love that. I'm, I'm ready for a foot race. Let's go. Uh, right yeah, now, yeah. drop everything you're doing. <laughs> so uh, then, honestly, I'll, 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 I'll bring out my Olympian athlete. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we like to give people a, a soapbox, something that you would stand on a corner and yell about, and I'd love to give you that moment right now. What is something for you that's very passionate that you'd love to have our listeners hear? Oh, I think it's all um, encompassing what we've spoken about. I, if, if there was anything that I would want our listeners to know is that this is the time to rediscover your magic. It's time to shine a light <laughs> on who you are and what you're here for and, 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 and who you can become in this process. You know, it's just, it's, it's about you deciding from here on in, deciding that you are ready from this moment. And from that place, uh, taking the actions, as, we, as we've talked about here, uh, that's going to create that momentum. And, you know, there's, there's no better time, as I said right now. Don't buy into the, the state of the economy this is the time for you to say yes to if you're curious about knowing what it takes to be that millionaire in this in this um, new economy the energies are really supportive right now so tune into what you're here for listen to your heart have courage uh and you know just become more of who you're here to be by rediscovering the magic of what's possible yeah and if you want to rediscover some of that magic you go to Catherine say your website one more time <laughs> CatherineNewton.com. I'm very active on socials, on Facebook, on um, Instagram, especially, uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm here to help people make a difference, and you know, and I want to say, I am so grateful to influential you. Uh, I'm a big believer that if I'm going to tell people that they need a mastermind group and a peer group and a support group and a coach, then I have to have one too. And I'm really grateful to Drew for finding me, uh, you know, and, and, and shoulder tapping me and saying it's time. Uh, and I'm really grateful for you, John, for starting this company. Thanks for your time here today, Josh. It's been awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm really thankful that Drew found you too. And thank you so much <laughs> for being my guest today. And we'll talk to you in a little bit. John, I have so many things that I've written down. What are you hearing? Well, uh, you know, we just got back from 
our advanced development retreat or our, our elite retreat with some of the most advanced people in our membership. And it's kind of what she was pointing at um, in this whole thing, which was the last couple of years, people have gone into despair. Yeah. There's been a lot that we've been dealing with. And in many ways, we're not on the other side of that despair. We're just starting to poke our head out of it. So I couldn't agree more, except that you might be in despair about your ability to do this, start that company, build that dream, except that you are, just accept it. And what I watched happen in Cabo, we were in Cabo, what I watched happen in Cabo is as soon as people started to accept the despair, then they started to consider new possibilities. They started to look at how, well, wait a second. I remember Trisha Tyler. We know her well. We love her well. She stood up at the microphone and, and I was being interacted with by Kirkland. And I said something like, I am so tired and I'm so exhausted and I'm so spent. And Trisha stood up and said something like, well, I got some willpower for you. So mm. if you don't have enough willpower, I have some to spare and you can call on me. And there's a kind of, oh yeah, in all of the looking down and huddling in and getting small that we did during the last couple of years, I forgot to look up and look out and ask for help. And the moment that everybody in the room started to see the room as this amazing resource of help, then we all got really big. And so I, I, I couldn't agree more. Now is the time, uh, you know, if you want to use us, please do. If you want to use Catherine, please do. But uh, this is the time. Yeah, I accept all of that. I, I, um, I think it's so funny because I, I talk to clients every day for millennia we've used each other in tribes and we used each other. We, I mean, we hunted in packs. And so now in 2023, suddenly I don't need anyone else. Eh, that's bullshit. So that's, I, I'm glad that, that you had that realization and it's, it's so wise. Um, I think if I had more talent, I would probably be learning that all the time too. But I'll say this, what I really heard today is the difference between satisfaction and happiness. It's something that I learned at the yeah. very beginning of working here. I remember the first time you said, well, we help people, become satisfied in many conditions of their lives. We don't chase after happiness. You can't measure happiness in a bucket. And I thought, well, that's not very sexy. Like who, well, I'm selling satisfaction. That doesn't make any sense. And satisfaction in, in my world is like a 60s song, you know, that, that's about the, the extent of satisfaction for me. But as like Kate was talking, as Catherine was talking, she kept saying happiness. And I kept looking at her when she was saying it. And I kept thinking there is someone that is happy because she's satisfied. Right. And at the beginning of her story, and you can kind of hear it, and I'm, I'm sure people are going to listen to it again because it was so good. You can hear she was happy, but she didn't really have a reason why. Like she was just, I'm, I'm just a happy person, just swimming along. But now she has that bucket filled of satisfaction, and she can go into her satisfaction and pull her happiness. And I really saw someone who is really taking what they've studied, applying it, and because of that, it's almost like their happiness, their joy is overflowing because they've got more of it because they're satisfied. Well, it's a little bit like, I mean, it reminds me, and I think this is just a, a last little note I'll say about it, but, you know, there's a big difference between happiness and satisfaction. And there's been a long, long history, especially here in the United States, and I'm, I'm assuming maybe also uh, in New Zealand, Australia, and, uh, and many other places where our students live, where we've spent, you know, um, back in the 70s and 80s, back at that, those times, People started to think, oh, if I'm just happy, the rest will follow. Or, oh, if I'm just confident, the rest will follow. In fact, there was a study paper that was launched by a couple of psychologists saying that uh, confident children did better than others. And then a whole bunch of people went to work on making sure that children felt confident. And then the world started to realize that confidence followed competence hmm. and that those people that were happy those children that were happy had competence that left them confident yeah it follows it follows and i think happiness follows a kind of satisfaction when your money's working when your health is working when your career is working when 
things are growing. When th you're happy, you're just happy. So that's off to her. I like that. I'll, I can't really add a whole lot except I'll, I'll just say it's, it's so wonderful to have that because in a world of millennials that I sit next to and I look around and all of us got our trophies for participating and I've got a room full of them in my house. Right. It's so good to be free of that and to kind of realize the entitlement that comes along with that because it takes me so much further than a lot of my other peers just in that one little click of understanding that my competence leads to my confidence. Yeah. My satisfaction leads to my happiness. And, and thank you to you and Kirkland for all those lessons. Well, and I'm going to say one more thing about freedom. Freedom comes with obligation. It's really amazing. I, I love that you pointed that out, but freedom comes with obligation. I remember Peter, Peter Burgraff, um, he and I worked for a while on, on scheduling, like getting himself developed in the ability to schedule, to practice scheduling. And at first he's a performer and he said, oh my God, I'm not going to be free. I need to be free. I need to be free. I need to be free. And one day he called me after I think six or seven months of scheduling everything for quite a while. He goes, I've never known so much freedom. He said, I don't have to worry about anything because it's all in my calendar. I don't have to worry about anything because it, it exists someplace other than in my head. I'm not late for things because it exists someplace. So freedom follows obligation. Competence follows, excuse me, confidence follows competence and happiness follows satisfaction. So there you go. That's my speech for the day. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not following that up with anything. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd like to know more about us, go to influentialu.global and explore our courses, consulting, and conferences. We offer a four-year curriculum for those seeking an advanced experience. However, if you're new to Influential U, we recommend that you start with Thrive, self-guided training. Thrive is a self-guided program that lets you learn at your own pace. Thrive members enjoy weekly live e-coaching sessions and an ever-expanding library of exclusive video lessons with our faculty, thought leaders, and industry experts. You'll get proven proprietary tools to accurately assess your career and develop a realistic strategy to achieve your aims faster. Your membership also includes chat access to faculty plus discounts to our transformative conferences. And Catherine told us she's going to be there, so you'll want to come to our conference as well. Sign up today and use promo code 20 off. That's 20OFF for a 20% discount on the monthly subscription of the Thrive program. That's coupon code 20OFF20OFF. Next week, we have a big interview coming for you, and I can't wait for you to be here with us because we have a producer that you will not believe, and I mean producer, as her personality and transactional competence. You are going to love the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Each week, we stream live at 2 p.m. Pacific on our website, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, so you can easily share it with others. You can also subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or any place that you get good podcasts. Check out our show notes for links to connect with our guests, plus links to websites, books, or special downloads we talked about on today's episode. This podcast is made possible by the Influential You staff, faculty, and members all around the world. With a special thanks to our executive producer, Tyson Crandall, and contributions from Michael Teehee, Joey Anderley, Daryl Anderley, Paul West, and Liz Smiley, and a big special thanks and a hug to Catherine Newton, our guest today. The Influential You podcast is produced by Influence Ecology LLC in Ventura, California. This episode was recorded on November 16th, 2022. The podcast theme is by Chris Standring and titled Fast Trained Everywhere. And if you haven't yet offered a rating or review, I ask that you take a moment, go to iTunes or your podcast app and let us know what you think. This helps us more than you know. And we'll see you next week on the Influential You podcast. Thank you.